Okay, my friends, I'm going to talk about uh, oil ratios, fuel oil ratios, that is, and hopefully uh, shed some new light on the subject. This shows the two methods of selecting the fuel oil ratio. The first one, the top one, is where you just um, you, s you basically hang around 30, 32, even 35 to 1. Just a generic ratio for all bikes. Um, which, which is fine if you're going to race because um, that ensures that you have more than enough oil. It helps keep the engine cooler. It helps increase power. It protects the uh, bearings and the rings better under the, uh, the stresses of racing. But um, the only twist to that is that you have to make sure that the oil has enough viscosity to, uh, to be used at those ratios. There are oils that need to be used at 20 to 1 or 25 to 1. So that's the only uh, exception to that rule. Uh, the second way is if you select a, a fuel oil ratio according to the viscosity of the oil. As I look at, at, the, at some of the recommendations of the oil manufacturers, I saw that, that they were you know, more or less hanging around a certain diluted oil viscosity. And by diluted viscosity, I mean the the watered down viscosity of the oil. That that is to say, um, in this case, a 35 to 1 ratio. The oil only has one part of 35 parts of the, the mixture, and so it's it's diluted. Okay. So if you divide three by 35, you get 0.086. Okay. So, um, but. It's not so so simple as knowing the viscosity at a certain set temperature. It has to do with the actual estimated upper cylinder temperature of the engine, which is dependent upon mostly upon RPM and type of cylinder cooling. These are some quotes I found on the internet uh, concerning oil viscosity and how it is the prime. Uh, way in which an oil protects an engine. Viscosity is the single most important physical property of a lubricant. It is a crude measure of a lubricant's molecular con constitution from the standpoint of hydrocarbon chain size. Viscosity determines film's thickness and film strength. Viscosity is very important because it affects the oil's ability to reduce friction and transfer heat. An oil's first line of defense is its viscosity. The ability of the oil film to prevent contact between the rings and the cylinder is a function of an oil's viscosity. Generally speaking, the more viscous or thicker an oil, the greater load it will carry. And speaking to Joy Cabrera at Motul, he mostly agreed. On my site, I list the oil viscosities of um, most of the most of the best oils of the, the most popular oils and all the other important data about them uh, the two main temperatures at which oils are listed at is 100 degrees centigrade and 40 degrees centigrade 40 degrees is like room temperature so as the temperature goes up the viscosity goes, goes down so it's important to, to know an estimate of the upper cylinder temperature to know what effect it's going to have upon whatever oil you're using, to know what its viscosity is, to know at which ratio to mix that in order to get at least the 0.086 diluted viscosity. This graph shows the viscosity change with temperature. As the temperature goes up, the viscosity goes down. And uh, the starting point depends upon the viscosity index. 
Honda HP2 has a viscosity index of 117, Motul 800 of 136, Motor X cross power 157. There is such a thing as viscous friction, and I don't know how important it is, but if it is important, then high, having then using a uh, oil of a high viscosity index would be better for a trail bike that, that uses the, the full range of RPM versus a race bike that just uses the upper RPM. In other words, a race bike would just stay up in these upper temperatures here. But an enduro bike, <clears throat> you know, he might climb a hill and the temperature would go up and then he might be on a real easy trail for a while and the temperature would be going down and be going down and the viscosity would be going up and going up. And a viscous friction is, is going to be uh, something the piston has to fight against, then a high viscosity oil will be less resistance to piston movement. But don't quote me, I'm not 100% sure how much we're talking about here. Okay, uh, this graph shows uh, upper cylinder temperatures, you know, where the, the rings are touching from 7,000 to 12,000 RPM of water-cooled engines and air-cooled engines. And this is generic, and it's, you know, more or less, it's close to the, to the truth, but not exactly. Every engine is going to be going to vary a bit, but this gets you in the ballpark. Using these temperatures, you can, uh, you can know where the uh, what whichever oil you're using where it's going to be at at the upper cylinder temperature okay in my uh, ratio calculator it estimates that upper cylinder temperature according to the RPM and the type of cylinder cooling and that then it applies that to the oil um, you're using uh, but that depends upon the 150 and 200 degree uh, viscosities. And to determine that, I go to this website right here, which is the link to it on my site. And you have to enter 40 degrees here, the 40 degree viscosity, 100 degrees here, the 100 degree viscosity, and then 150 here, and calculate. And it'll tell you the 150 degree viscosity right here. Change that to 200 right here. Hit calculate again. It'll show you the 200 degree viscosity here. And those two viscosities for an oil that I don't already have plugged into the calculator, you would put in to, um, well, this is the oil calc the ratio calculator. And if you scroll down farther down here, there's, there's four blank sets of spaces for different oils. And this is the 150 degree viscosity column and the 200 degree viscosity column. So you would put those two figures in here. And according to uh, the type of cooling, the maximum RPM, it will give you an estimated upper cylinder temperature and that applied, you know, um, this is setting a, a scale and it's fairly linear at, at that range right there. So like 192 would be very close to 1.84 instead of the 3.1. But anyway, it's, it's mathematically figured in to get the final viscosity at that temperature. And then it figures in the fuel oil ratio to get the 0.086 diluted viscosity. And that gives you the, the, um, the maximum uh, fuel oil ratio that you would want to use, um, the, the least amount of oil that you would want, want to use if you're not racing. So this, this right here shows uh, the agree agreement with some, some oil manufacturers. Um, Motul recommends 800 off-road be used at 50 to 1 and my calculator shows for 125 cc it would be 51 to 1 so it's almost exactly the same uh, these three 
examples are exactly the same as what my racial calculator shows. Okay, it seems like the um, most of the uh, bike manufacturers are going by the first method in order to um, to have the best reliability, less warranty repairs. Um, if you look at the Honda manual, that you see that they recommend the Honda Pro, Pro, the Pro Honda HP2 oil, which is a synthetic oil, at 32 to one. And um, even though it's it's such a good synthetic, my uh, ratio calculator says that it could be used at high as high as 54 to one for 125. Yamaha recommends 30 to 1 of Yamalube 2R and that's exactly what my ratio calculator says so they've got the best of both worlds there but they're using a, a, a fairly good um, mineral oil which is the Yamalube it has it has no synthetic in it at all but it, as far as being a mineral oil it's it's a good good quality oil KTM varies from what they were doing and they do make uh, ratio changes according to uh, engine size. For the 125 they're recommending 40 to 1 of Motorex cross power and my ratio calculator says it should be used at 36 to 1 so that's even just a little bit thinner than than what the calculator shows. And for 250 they recommend 60 to 1 and my calculator shows 42 to 1. Actually I think I think they're screwing up. I think that, that both of those ratios are too high and they should go go down a tad on each one. But it's not the first time that KTM screwed up like that. Okay, um, Maxima is pretty much in, in, uh, in agreement with the second method. And on their oil migration sheet and on their website, they, they show that they recommend uh, different ratios for different size engines for motocross. I don't know if you can read this, but it says, sorry, I find my mouse. It says for 50 to 125cc, the ratio should be 25 to 32 to 1. And uh, the average of that is 28.5. And on my ratio calculator for 14,000 RPM max, the ratio of an oil that, that matches the 36 to 1, which is the, the mid-range here for the 125 to 250 cc, which would be these three oils right here, and one or two more, would be 29 to 1. And it's the same 36 to 1 for the 125 to 250 cc. And above 250cc, they recommend 40 to 1. And my ratio calculator says for either of these three oils at 8,000 RPM max, it should be 39 to 1. So my ratio calculator and what Maxima is recommending is, is, is pretty close. So, um... Uh, there's another feature to the ratio calculator according to the heat and whether or not it uses a power valve it will give a recommendation of oils and the ones that it recommends are the ones that displays the the price and it's, if you mix the oil it shows it listed here these are the the cost of using that oil per gallon of gas and uh, so in this case, for an air-cooled engine driven to 10,000 RPM with no power valve, these three oils are recommended, these four oils are recommended, these two oils, Maxima Super M, Castor, uh, Klotz Benal, Maximum K2, at the listed ratios, and this shows these, these recommendations here are basically telling telling us uh, the level of uh, ash producing additive which is basically like a dry lubricant 
it's under times of like really terrible stress, like you're you're really revving it high up a really long uphill. Um, you know, you're, you're climbing a mountain basically. That would probably be the, like a worst case situation. Highest load, continual high RPM stress. Uh, for a high revving two stroke, they need that that dry lubricant at times. Unless you're just a person that just puts around. So, with these recommendations, these are hitting uh, according to what types of oil there are in the, the product and the, uh, the ratings. This is not to say you can't use other oils, but these are the ones that would be most 100% recommended.